Hi, in this video we'll look into developing a simple cursor with an example. If you haven't worked with cursor in SQL Server or if you never developed a cursor or if you wanted to know how cursor works in SQL Server, this is the perfect video. Cursors exist in other relational databases like Oracle, MySQL and any other relational databases but uh, the way you work with the cursor is different from each database. But the functionality is same. So the cursor will allow you to do particular action or particular run particular process or run particular scripts based on each row. At the same time looking at different columns that might exist in that row. So the basic structure of the cursor will look something like this. So in SQL Server. So first of all you declare a cursor and you open that particular cursor for a set of records. This can be a SQL statement or it can be a result from a temp table and you basically run a loop to fetch every record from the cursor and you loop until uh, there are no more records in the cursor and you close the cursor once you are done at this point you have ability to open the cursor again but once you deal de allocate the cursor you know you the cursor will be destroyed and every the, the memory structures that have been assigned to deal with the cursor during the runtime will be destroyed so now we kind of understand the basic structure of the cursor. So let's take a simple example of, uh, you know, in our situation, for example, if we want to take a backup of every database in a particular environment. Uh, so for example, in our, in our scenario, we would like to look at the number of databases that are available on the server. And uh, during the runtime, we generate the SQL that needed to take the backup. And then we execute the SQL. And then, you know, we, we, we go through each and every database in our database and do the same thing. So now we have an idea of what you, what we want to do. So let's walk through, through that process and show you how you get there. So first we declare the variables, um, you know, these, these variables will be used during the cursor execution process, the database name, the path where the database will be, you know, um, will be, you know, the database backup will be stored and the file name of the database backup and the, the date appended to that particular file name. So in this case, this is the path. So we'll make sure that this path exists. It does. So, and then we assign the date, which going to be the, when, when the, when the cursor executes, you know, um, you know, the, you know, we, we will get the current date, but to start off for the first time, we use the, we use the current date when the, when the script executes. So now the actual part of the cursor starts, we declare the cursor and we declare the cursor for this result set which is select name from sys databases where name not in you know so so we want to basically back up every user database so once the cursor is defined we open the cursor so when we open the cursor we want to make sure that there is at least one record in the cursor uh, to, ab to be able to fetch or to be able to process so we fetch that uh, row from that cursor and we store it in a, in a variable. So in this case, it's only uh, a you know one column. So it automatically assigns that one column to this variable. If we are dealing with multiple columns, then we have to assign multiple variables in rec in in respective to that result in that cursor. So the next thing we'll do is we'll make sure that the cursor was successfully fetched. So the fetch status equal to zero means that the last fetch that occurred was successful. That means a record has been um, taken from the cursor object and stored into this variable successfully. So we begin this with the while loop for this uh, particular conditional statement saying that if fs status is equal to zero, we'll do it in this loop. So it's exactly the loop that we define here. So we we'll loop until there is a fetch status of zero, which is a successful fetch. So once we begin the code, of the actual block that will be executed every time for each row in that particular result set. So we'll set the file name you know, based on the path. We assign the name of the database and then the file date, which will be the date. The backup database script, which uh, we normally use in the SQL Server is the same script. So we, um, you know, we, we, we include this SQL in this code block and, uh, you know, we, we, uh, 
ba we are backing up with compression and as well as in it that means uh, the backups will be overwritten will not be up appended so once this backup is done and the next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll fetch next uh, row from this cursor into this variable or next so and we'll check the fetch status is zero once uh, if the fetch status is zero the code block repeats itself if it is not zero then we, then it will go to the the next statement in here it is a close the cursor and we'll deallocate the cursor so let's go ahead and run this statement and uh, I just deleted, deleted all the backups from this folder that there's nothing in here so let's go ahead and run this statement as I tested this before it will take about uh, you know 8 to 10 seconds to uh, I don't have many databases I have like couple of uh, I have adventure works database and a couple of other um, databases so this this is done so as you can see here you know uh, as each backup finishes we have messages from the backup saying that it is successful so if you look it in our folder we can see all the backups that are done from this statement that we ran now cursor cursors makes it easy to you know automate some stuff uh, automate you know some scripts in our database or you know it can be fragmenting your indexes it can be rebuilding the you know our statistics or updating the statistics things like that but there, it should be carefully considered where it can be used in terms of if the data set is huge you know uh, it, it will negatively impact the memory on the server so it should be properly tested and you know it should be used where applicable there are other alternatives for a cursor you know uh, for example using a while loop so in this to demonstrate the other the alternatives that we can uh, achieve the same functionality here a while loop is a is, is a you know is a, be a better way to go if you don't want to use a cursor we will we'll pretty much use the same set of variables um, to do this but in this step we're going to declare a table that stores our result from the sys databases table and uh, we'll create we'll assign a column called identity column which has an incrementing number starting from one so we'll set the loop to the number of rows that were inserted so basically the, if uh, there are five rows that means five databases then the loop the loop variable contain value five so we are going to loop we're going to loop until the loop becomes zero so it's pre pretty much the same kind of same code lo code block that goes in here we set the name of the database and we set the backup file name and we run the backup script and then we decrement you know a decrease one value from the loop so that we only execute for this for five times in our case you know we have uh, yeah so we have five databases so we have you know five you know five times this loop will be executed so let's go ahead and remove these database backups from here we don't have to because we are overriding it but just to prove that is this script works so I'm gonna go ahead and run this script it's gonna probably take same amount of time um, to take this backup although I'm not uh, I'm I not intend to test the performance of both the uh, cursor as well as while loop that would be uh, out of the scope of this presentation so now you can see the while loop has ran for five times and you can see the messages backup messages coming up here five five times for all the you know for each database there are other ways to do this as well so for example there is the system store procedure that SQL Server has called SP underscore MS for each DB so any command that you put in here can be ran for every database so the question mark includes the parameter as which the MS for a, for each database passes the database name so if I just run this you know I it will list out all the databases that are present in here so SP underscore MS for DB is a very powerful command to you know to uh, to to loop uh, to, to run particular command to loop through all the databases we can pretty much run the same command here you know we are going to use uh, the database with the question mark and we'll set the database name to a name and we'll probably use the same code block that we used before to do the backup let me clear these files here and let's go ahead and run this command again this this also pretty much takes about five to eight seconds to finish um, you know there because we only have five databases when which are very small so now this is done you can see there are five databases here so 
hopefully you uh, you like this presentation of uh, you know how to be how you can build a cursor and you know to also and to be able to also do the same thing by using either while loop or you know ssis you can probably achieve the same thing from ssis and there are many other ways you can do this thanks for watching